All right, everyone. Welcome to the IPFS All Hands Call for July 23rd, 2018. Uh, starting off today, looks like we have a light agenda with a lot of demos, which is something I love to see. Um, starting off, we should go with Michelle for the summer report here. Yeah, I can tell you about it. Uh, give me a thumbs up if you can hear me. My headphones are a little weird. Awesome, thank you. Uh, just a quick report out. Last week, for most of the week, I was at the ESIP uh, summer meeting. ESIP is Earth Science Information Partners, I believe. Uh, they pulled together a bunch of um, Earth Science data managers, like people from NOAA, people from NASA. Uh, great folks. I've worked with them before when I used to work with NOAA. Um, I proposed a, an unconference session there on distributed web stuff. It was packed. People were really interested. Um, what they had heard about distributed web stuff was a bit of IPFS, a bit of DAT. In general, DAT seemed more approachable to folks. Um, I'll be writing up notes about all this, and I will post it in a public place and let you all know. But uh, yeah, some interesting things there, lots of interest. Also now on the ESIP Slack, there's a distributed web uh, channel where people are just kind of, what is going on here? There is a future here. We don't know what it is, but we're very excited. So another thing is that if anybody um, has interest or time, I can hook you up with where that Slack is. It would be great to have people there to be able to answer questions. Uh, but that's a separate thing. I think that's the update. Any questions? Anyone have questions? Lovely. I'll, I'll write up a more detailed little summary of all that, but I want to let you know that happened. Perfect. All right, so that covers the agenda for today. Um, moving on to demos. Looks like we have two from Mache here. So is he, yep. Uh, if you're ready to go through with those, you can go ahead now. Um, yeah, so I built a tiny tool to basically just uh, publish something that's running on uh, localhost um, behind uh, HTTPS and uh, wait a second. Uh, so I have this uh, web server running here on localhost and now I just run the peer tunnel tool which then connects to this libpdp server and then opens a tunnel when I now go to this page, it uh, simply dials the peer back and uh, opens uh, a tiny relay. And now uh, this page is published via SSL and everybody can reach it from the internet. So anybody can visit this URL right now. And uh, also um, it logs access. So. Uh, that's basically it, this uh, tiny tool, um, and it uses the P2P, that's why I demoed it here. Um, has anybody got any questions? Rob, do you have a question? Yeah, um, it looked like you didn't necessarily add any parameters or anything to that. Is it tied to a particular um, host or peer ID or something, or is that configurable? Like, how, how do you run the other end um, that takes in Oh, I totally forgot to mention that. Uh, there is a simple admin interface that allows to assign a username per peer ID, and then that username is being used as the host name. It's also possible to add the suffix. Maybe I could demo that too. Um, I for, uh, forgot that. Um, so I can also, uh, if I want to add a suffix to the URL, mm. and then it opens the whole thing uh, under mkg2001 slash website. And the admin interface is also just uh, simply um, users add another ID and then I can add. Uh, 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 wait. I think I forgot the API, so it's better not to uh, demo this. I didn't really use it too much after I made it. <laughs> um, but that's basically uh, what it does.
Any more questions? All right, Macha, if you would like to go on with your second demo, you can go ahead. So uh, the second demo is uh, I have written this tool called LibPP No Trust some time ago that uh, issues certificates to um, any node uh, based on its IP address. And uh, I've recently rewritten the whole thing in microservices so it can be uh, managed more easily and wanted to demo how that works. So this is the demo page. This uh, basically connects to the issuing server that also runs uh, PubSub, uh, where all node trust nodes announce their node trust addresses and connects to them. So these are the addresses uh, that have been issued and it connects to them. And about the issuance process. Uh, so uh, here are four tiles. The top left is the DNS server. Uh, the top right is the proof server. The uh, Bottom left is the issuance server, and the uh, bottom right is the server where the client runs. So if I run the client, it first connects to the issuance server, then connects to different proof servers, for example, for IPv4. And then that should get logged here, that required the proof. Then it does a DNS uh, one challenge over let's encrypt using a DNS server. And uh, then it acquires a cert via ASME and uh, sends the cert back to the client. And after that, the client uh, should uh, appear in the browser. Uh, now it did, and now it should, uh, oh, didn't fully work. Maybe let's reload the page. <laughs> um, And now it's uh, connected to the uh, client that I just launched via SSL, via the cert just acquired. And uh, yeah, that's basically what Node Trust does. And additionally, I would maybe, I don't know if I should ask this in this meeting, but I would also like to get this deployed on the uh, protocol labs infrastructure so I don't have to manage this and uh, maybe get it into JS IPFS because it would be really useful for the browser as browsers would be able to connect to any peer instead of having to use PDP circuit because browsers have limited TCP connectivity and not everyone wants to run the JS IPFS node with WebRTC. And yeah, that's uh, what Node Trust does. Uh, has anybody got questions to that? I would like to ask the group here if anyone with authority um, is present for, for such a thing, like where would Mache go to, to possibly get this into our infrastructure? Uh, he would probably talk to Lars. Yeah, the actual, can you hear me? Uh, yes. Um, the actual question is like, do we do we actually need it? Like, we uh, and thank you so much for demoing uh, Node Trust uh, again, Machine. It, it is right now just like unclear because we haven't done the actual like thinking of how this fits together with the peer to peer collection of modules and like what users expect. Is this actually a good thing to add? Like, will it create security issues in the future? And so there are all these questions. And like, uh, if we go maybe a couple of months, maybe three months uh, of IPFS uh, ago, we'll see that like these questions were raised in the past, but like we still haven't had the time to like dive deep and get an answer to those. And so, yes, like I guess like we can just like host it. Like if it's just a question of like uh, resources to like host the service, uh, we can host it. But from that to actually communicating to our users, creating a tutorial about all these works, like, incentivizing people to use it it's a it's a different step and so uh, i would like to see a little bit more people getting involved with node trust uh reviewing it like sharing sharing their thoughts 
uh, probably like get no trust to be um, like to, to have a proper spec on RFC so that other people can really understand what's happening underneath and like what are the shortcomings that it tries to solve. Otherwise, um, we, we might just like be adding something that we don't clearly understand the implications. Did I lost everyone? Can, could people hear me from the beginning to the end? I'm in a very laggy connection, I'm so sorry. Okay. Uh, and so, um, yes, uh, basically, like, we, sh we should have this discussion. Like, and if people are super interested, like, they, they should, uh, um, or at least they can self appoint themselves right now or later, but like, volunteer to review and work uh, on this with Matthew. And maybe, Matthew, you can, like, uh, follow up on the issue on with peer to peer about no trust uh, and feeding the group here uh, to see if everyone uh, anyone has uh, the time in the short term to to like go through the architecture of no trust and its implication in the near future. I know that everyone is pretty busy with some events that are happening soon, so it might be hard, um, but nevertheless, important to do. All right, so it looks like we have no other questions on that. All right, up next we have Jamie with Hubot. Hi, can you all hear me? Hi, I'm Jamie dialing in from New York. Uh, long time listener, first time caller. This will be a fast one, so if you all saw a couple weeks ago when Juan demoed the um, IPFS Hubot script that he wrote, which interfaces with the daemon locally and allows you to run all these commands. And then he'd done it kind of how everybody bootstraps a little Hubot plugin, just as like a little script inside of the, um, directly inside of your Hubot application. Uh, all I did was just break it out into a plugin, which I've done a bunch of times before for things that are reused. It makes it easier to upgrade, easier to publish, easier to add into your own Hubot. Um, I sent in a little PR here on this tab for switching it over, um, which is still outstanding in case anybody wants to approve me. And then um, if you need a quick demo, I have um, my little Hubot that I've had running inside of a couple different Slacks and IRC channels for a few years that, um, as you can see, it's kind of just uses the external scripts. And so you got Hubot IPFS here. And this is published on NPM right now. And then if you want to see, you know, it works exactly like the way Wands did where, you know, I can ask my bot for help. I can ask it for IPFS help. And then uh, let me grab a hash. You can just say pin hash and wait. And it pins your hashes for you. And uh, that's it. But that means that if we make updates to the plugin centrally, you know, it's as easy as a little NPM update inside of your own Hubot to get the latest version, which just makes easier things to, easier to maintain. I think that's it. I'll stop sharing. Obligatory, awkward, any questions? It was cool. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> All right, cool demo aside, let's move on to another cool demo from Lytle here. Uh, talking about IPFS in Firefox Nightly. Yeah, so <clears throat> let's try to share my screen. Okay, did it show? <laughs> Can you see my screen? Yeah. Cool. All right, so uh, I created a libdweb branch in IPFS Companion, our Companion browser extension, and you have to easy scripts to build it. This libdweb experiment, you just run libdweb build, and then you need to download uh, Firefox Nightly, make sure it's on your path. And then if you run in this context, it just starts Firefox Nightly with our little experiment. And hopefully, yeah, looks like it
Lionel, I think you've gone muted. I think I've muted myself when I was like dragging this. <laughs> Sorry about that. So uh, we don't have many uh, um, we don't have many hashes to test. So I there's this issue with this experiment, and I put some hashes there. So if you copy a hash and put it in the address bar, it will load natively, and uh, it stays there. <laughs> So what's happening behind the scenes is that uh, there's no HTTP anymore, uh, at least uh, in the browser context. Uh, we are streaming response from IPFS node. Right now it's like my local node, which I connect over HTTP, but you can switch to uh, embedded one. Uh, that will work at some point. Uh, what's cool about this is that not only images work, but also like, regular okay maybe if i don't make a typo yeah if you copy without a typo you will see there is like a regular website loading from ipfs uh protocol and not only that we also have uh, directory listening back again like you you, you can traverse uh, the directory uh, if you have it locally, it goes much faster. Uh, what's most exciting for me is that we got a streaming working, and that means and that means you have like a video working over this native protocol, and it's actually uh, it's a real stream. Uh, you can start watching before it loads. Um, what does not work yet? is that if you try to use IPFS protocol in things like video tag, uh, I, I like created a small demo page. Oh, okay, that worked. <laughs> <laughs> so uh, that was not supposed to work. And I think there is some kind of a bug because it not always works. So there are two videos, one is like, uh, Load it over IPFS protocol, and another one is uh, read from the public gateway. Um, that's the current state of things. Uh, we also have like uh, basic uh, error handling. So if you paste invalid CID, you will get an information that you should upgrade to base variety two. It will make this uh, like user experience better. But for now, that starts. Um, and there are like a list of open questions and uh, known issues, uh, which we will be tackling uh, over time uh, with uh, friends from Mozilla, but uh, that's the current uh, status update of uh, native protocol handler. And I'll stop sharing right now, so I can see if there are any crickets there. Woo! <laughs> <laughs> any questions? Rob? Um, is, is the supposed bug that we didn't get to see, pro is, is that a libd web problem, or um, is that something on the companion side? Uh, that, that's a good question. I suspect the problem is that uh, the way um, streaming of, of uh, video sources work, it, this may be like internally handled over uh, content range header in HTTP. The problem is that when you move away from HTTP, you don't have this abstraction. So it may be that we may need additional like metadata layer or like way of signaling ranges uh, for those use cases. That's like an open question. Uh, it may like it, it, it's possible that it started working because I've opened it directly before. So it was like in Firefox memory. It may be related to Firefox specific architecture. It may be specific to libd experiment, or it's just maybe that we don't have those uh, like range semantics yet. All right, any more questions for that? Okay, any 
impromptu agenda items or does anyone need help with anything that they would like to ask the, the group? Michelle? I have a question and you might be able to redirect me somewhere. The biggest question that came up at ESIP, well maybe there were two separate questions. One of them was, what happens on IPFS for something like uh, New York Times or something like that, where there's a, um, a place that you want to go a lot, but the stuff underneath changes? Is that something that someone has written up or thought, does that make sense? Like you might have a content address to an article, uh, but you want to find a group of articles somewhere. That like folder, is there a concept of that in IPFS? Might not be a good question. <laughs> I'm reading. I'm reading some text here. Sorry, could you go from the top again? You you want a uh, like some way to link from a content address article to some set of articles? Um, probably. I mean, category. the general the general concept that I can explain it because you know I'm new to the community mm -hmm. and all that uh, was that what happens then with something like the New York Times where it changes, but you want to have you want to be able to find it. Yeah, you could also think of it. I mean, related, but maybe a separate question is like streaming but that that's kind of a separate thing but yeah so we have something called ipns it's mm -hmm. the, the mutable link system uh so you can uh, put your your data in a content addressable system and then make an ipns pointer point to it and then we're going to update it you just or you change it and you quit, get a new content addressable address and then you make the pointer point to the new thing um if you want something more like live uh you can do this with javascript where like you load some content addressable thing in your in your website or so in your web browser uh, and then you run some JavaScript in the background that connects to various servers or like connects to like the, the um, LibPDP network and uses pub servers like that to like fetch new data. But uh, it really depends on what you're trying to do for like a simple, like you want to make the New York Times or you want to like make some blog. Uh, you got to worry yourself to the content, you should use IPNS. I think that was their, their way, their example, probably the, the use case for big data stuff would be a, new version of data comes up and you want to be able to like say, ah, oh, here's all the stuff and then, okay, here's the new thing, here's the new thing, here's the new thing, but not lose the connection that this is the new version of the, the old uh, thing. Okay. Yeah. yeah. Usually what you do there is you, you would like, you would have um, uh, your data set, you'd have an IPNS uh, link that points to your data set and you'd make the IPNS link point to the new data set and then the new data set would point back to the old data set. <laughs> I'll learn about IPNS sounds like is, okay. is the thing there. Thank you. Oh, uh, I don't know if I'm supposed to call on people, but is Johnny saying a thing? <laughs> yeah, I think just um, uh, to build on that with the web companion and IPFS colon slash slash is the, is the IPNS colon slash slash. And ultimately that's going to be a hash of a public key. And in base 32 encoding, how to handle the multi keys, um, especially for elliptic curve uh, public keys. And uh, what, what's the, the challenges to, to that. I suppose the question is really for Lytle. Yeah, so that's a very timely question because like right now, if you have IPNS and you want to refer to, P, to a peer, uh, you use like peer ID, right? And the problem is that those are in base 58. And I don't think we have like a convention or do we even allow different, like at least multi-base encoding, yeah, of peer IDs. So that's like an op open question. Uh, and until that's solved, we won't be able to use IPNS in new protocols on the IPFS. Okay, do you have a, a documented issue somewhere? So I, I'm working on this right now with, uh, uh, I, as I presented last week was um, this IPID project with um, uh, ED25519 and there's an emerging standard for HD wallets using 25519 and so I think but it ultimately since I'm using the peer ID as this did unique identifier it's I'm, I'm running to this issue about base 32 encoding and it's suddenly like not gonna be possible yeah like like personally uh... The way I see it, the current peer, peer ID is just like multi-hash. 
So if we allow to put it in a CID one like representation that would work the same way in IPFS and in IPNS, it may be that I don't see some technical problems. Steven? Uh, so at the end of the day, we would like to switch to IPLD for keys. Uh, mm -hmm. So we get rid of all those issues, but the upgrade path is a bit unclear because like the key version zero or the, the CAD version zero of keys is not the same thing as the CAD version zero of files. So we have two things that like they're both just bare multi hashes and you can't tell the difference. Uh, there are some issues that try to figure this out mostly by saying, well, there's no real CID version zero. It's just contextual based on the prefix. So like you have like slash IPFS slash CID version zero, you interpret it one way. If you have, or sorry, slash bare uh, hash, you interpret it one way. If you have slash P2P slash bare hash, you interpret it a different way. Unfortunately, we also have like, we've been using slash IPFS for the protocol as well, the protocol name. So we can't quite disambiguate that. But like currently, like if you have slash IPFS slash QM, whatever, that could either be a file or a key. And you, you can't tell the difference at the moment. So. All right. Rob? Um, on the more practical side, does that mean for LibDWeb and companion stuff, the only way for now to address mutable content that reliably works is DNS link? So you could have IPNS colon slash life domain name. Yeah, like anything apart from the native protocol will work. Because uh, Unless you want to put a uh, pure ID, like the, 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 the key hash in a subdomain, anything apart of using that in subdomain will work correctly, like it works right now. Uh, subdomains and native protocol handler are kind of the same abstraction. You put a base 32 case uh, insensitive uh, uh, hash in uh, authority component um, and we think else will work fine does this new protocol handler have a link limit in the sorry? domain name no, sorry does the new protocol handler and the new ifs protocol handle have a uh, link limit L like length yeah. how long can it be i yeah. don't think so we did not try that okay hopefully not <laughs> because like right now we have everything sort of fits in a domain name in the future that's probably not going to happen that'll change over time so mm -hmm. all right we are slightly over time so i don't think we have any more time for questions but it seems like a little productive session um with that said i think that's going to conclude our meeting for today so i look forward to seeing everyone next week Take care. Bye-bye.